Good morning, saints. We thank God for another opportunity to come together and study his holy word. Uh, we pray that it's been well with your soul this week. Uh, we thank God just for who he is. So let us pray before we start. Father God, we thank you for this opportunity to come together right now. Uh, to God, we hear on one accord, believing in faith uh, in your son, Jesus. To God, we ask right now for your wisdom and knowledge as we study your holy word. Dear God, be a lamp unto our feet, a light unto our path, because we need your direction. Dear God, we pray for those that don't know you today, because today is the day of salvation. Dear God, tomorrow is not promised. So, dear God, we pray for your saving grace today, and we love you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right. So the topic of today's lesson is salvation for all who believe. Uh, the printed text is Romans 10, 5 through 17. And the aim for changes, by the end of this lesson, we will explain Paul's confidence in the salvation offered in Christ, feel justified through our faith in Christ, and embrace with joy the possibility for all, salvation for all. Um, let's back up to verse 1 in chapter 10 so we can get a full view of the context and what Paul is speaking in. Um, but again, he's uh, speaking to the Jews um, and he's been talking about righteousness through belief in Christ. Uh, so here we start in verse 10. It says, Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God of Israel is that, that, that they might be saved. Uh, so Paul was praying because he was seeing some things lacking. So he's praying that they might be saved. He said, For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. Um, and that kind of exemplifies sometimes maybe someone new in Christ or just things you do. Sometimes you can be real zealous about something, but not a good understanding of knowledge of what you're zealous about. He said, for they being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. So what he was saying there, that they were, they were ignorant and not knowing not the righteousness that God, that is God's, but the righteousness that God gives or bestowed. They were ignorant of how God bestows righteousness. And he had explained that in chapter 3 when he says, The righteous standards come to those who believe in Christ. So he goes on to say in verse 4, For Christ is the end of the law of righteousness to everyone that believeth. And all that means is this, that the law continues to be a reflection of God's standard of holiness. It just means that righteous standing before God is not based on keeping the law or works. It's based on belief. And that's where we pick up at verse 5, because to the Jews, that was a huge issue. It was too easy. They wanted a righteousness that they had to work for, just like us. You know, sometimes we make things too hard, um, and we like to do things the hard way, but Christ made it simple. He came and did some things that made salvation simple for us. So here we pick up in our printed text, and again, we have four outlines here, and, and they'll all tie together as we go through the scriptures, but we cannot be saved by the law. We are saved through Jesus Christ the only way and we must become Christians but how and we must take the good news to others so we'll pick up at at verse verse 5 and that's our first outline where it says uh, we cannot be saved uh, by the law and here we see it reads for Moses described the righteousness which is of the law the man which doeth those things shall live by them so what he's saying here is that Moses gave them the law and at that time the law described what righteousness looked like and that the one that do those things shall live by those things but the problem with that no one could do it no one could keep the law it was it was impossible. It required perfect obedience, and it was impossible for mankind. That's why the sacrificial system was instituted. That's why there had to be sacrifices for sin, because no one could be righteous before God, because no one could keep the law 
at every point of it because if you miss one point you miss the whole law so that's what Paul is is reminding them there and he goes on to say because again the, the law is is fine Christ didn't come to end the law he came to fulfill the law so he goes on to say but the righteousness which is of faith speaks of this wise now he's comparing faith versus the law but righteousness of righteousness which is of faith speaks on this wise say not in thine heart who shall ascend into heaven that is to bring Christ down from above or who shall descend into the deep that is to bring Christ again from the dead so what he's saying there is basically Christ has already done the work there's no human effort there's no one that can go into heaven and there's no one that can go into the deep Christ has already done the work for us so you can't make you can't work to make it happen you can't work to make yourself right with God that's the point he's bringing up here and the point that we have to remember there's no works the work has already been done and to the Jews again that just sound too easy there's got to be some part or something that I got to do there's got to be some type of works that have make me right but Paul is going to go on to make it plain for us and that will help us today but what said the word is nigh thee even in their mouth and in their heart that is the word of faith which we preach while while we're trying to work hard and do these things and thinking we got to go high above or down and deep he's saying the word is is close to you righteousness by faith is about believing uh, it is as close to your mouth and heart and that is as he said the word of faith which we preach so he was saying that it's closer than you know it's right there because he goes on to say in verse 9 and and I know we all know this but it says that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe not work but thou shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead thou shalt be saved for with the heart a man believeth unto righteousness and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation and so you can see again in those verses it said nothing about working for salvation it talked about believing uh, for salvation or believing in your heart and believe in the word of God and confessing that and confession is made unto salvation and see I noticed to be true that it does just take belief because again when I was at my worst and far away from God Christ still died for me I didn't do anything but he loved me enough to still die for me to give me an opportunity to believe in him and be saved but I had to believe that in my heart that he was raised from the dead uh, and thou shalt be saved. So, and I know all of this, but, but do you know how easy it is to slip back into believing we're righteous before God by things we do? It, it, it sometimes can happen subtly. And even for believers, it's a good reminder for us because uh, sometimes when we're saved, we begin to try to work for God's approval. And again, that's what the scriptures, these scriptures are reminding us. You know, um, you've heard people say, and I've said this before, um, I'd given my life to Christ, but had left church, uh, never attended. And what I would say, you know, when I get myself together, I come back to church. And, and what that was sort of like saying, um, when I get healed, I go to the hospital. Um, I couldn't get myself together. Um, only believing would make me right with God and get me together. It's believing in Him, not believing in me. And sometimes we think we can work hard enough to please God. And all He's saying, believe me and have faith, that pleases me. You know, we shouldn't focus on our outward deeds as a measure a measuring tool for inward righteousness you know when we focus on work righteousness it prevents us from seeing Christ um, and I can attest to that because sometimes we can start thinking the things that we're doing is what's really pleasing Christ but me 
teaching a Sunday school lesson with no faith or belief in Christ does no good. Me sitting in a deacon's corner or me singing a song or standing at a door ushering and no belief or faith in Christ is not a good place to be. Saying it's no good. I need to go back to the basics of belief. And that's believing in Christ and believing in who he is and what he's already done for me. So and no matter no amount of works can save me. I can't work hard enough. So if you're a believer, don't slip into to the thought process or believing that I can that I'm working for God's approval um, or working for righteousness. That's already there by your belief. Uh, but it's easy to slip into those things. So he reminds us uh, in verse 11, for the scripture says, whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. So again, it goes back to believing, not working. And if you believe on Christ, you won't be ashamed. What makes you ashamed? Well, shame comes from believing in yourself. Uh, some things um, that God has called me to do, I've been somewhat hesitant or shame because I was believing in me not believing in him but if you do things with belief in God you won't be ashamed so if you're feeling that you're not good enough to do something or someone is asking you to pray for him and you seem somewhat ashamed then go back and trust God and believe in him and put your faith in him and that will take away the shame and here's the thing he goes on to say in verse 12 for there's no difference between the jew and the greek for the same lord over all is rich unto all of them that call upon him so i don't care who you are you know like he said there's there's no difference between the jew and the greek there's no difference in any of us because he made all of us and so the point he's making here you don't have to be ashamed no matter who you are you can come to Christ in faith, believing in him. And it says, for whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And that is good news. That I don't have to be from a certain sect or, or a certain ethnic background. It's just for whosoever call on his name and believe in him shall be saved. Now he goes on to make the point of, of, of getting the gospel out there. And he says, how shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? Well, you won't call on someone you have not believed. And how shall they believe in him whom they have not heard? And you won't believe something you hadn't heard. And how shall they hear without a preacher? And you need someone spreading the gospel someone has to tell you about the gospel and that's what the, the apostles were doing spreading the gospel and if you look at that in reverse the preacher preaches you hear and then you believe so spreading the gospel is is important because he goes on in verse 15 to tell us how important he said how shall that preach except they be sent as it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings and good things, bring some good news. And he ain't talking about mm, pedicured feet. He's saying how beautiful it is that people are bringing the good news of Christ, that you're in motion and that, you're, that your feet, that you're moving in faith and believing in Christ and spreading the good news of the gospel. But he makes it plain, you know, some are sent. We're all a called to do the work. Because Proverbs 3 and 15 reminds us, but sanctify the Lord God in your hearts and be ready always to give an answer to every man who asks you a reason for hope that is in you with meekness and fear. So we should always be ready to share the gospel. And our lives should reflect the gospel. So we should be this walking message, but also spreading the gospel. And it says that, but some are sent, some are anointed and called by God and sent. And, and, and they preach the gospel uh, daily, you know, not just on Sunday mornings in the same way we should be doing, preaching the gospel and sharing the gospel 
daily with others. Verse 16 and 17 brings it on home and it says, but they have not all obeyed the gospel. For Isaiah said, Lord, who hath believed our report? So then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So he said, who hath believed our report? Everyone that hears is not gonna believe. Um, you can hear without believing, but wouldn't it be a good thing that if everyone that heard the word would believe it and be saved, but everyone just won't believe it. So here, he's not talking about hearing with ears, but hearing with faith. That's when you move. So you have to combine your hearing with faith. And that leads to believing. That leads to working for Christ. That leads to salvation. You know, you have been riding in your car just listening to the radio and song after song go by and it doesn't do anything for you. Don't move it. Don't move you. But finally you hear your song and all of a sudden, boy, everything inside of you changes. Well, that's the way it is with the Word of God. You can come in Sunday after Sunday and just hear God's Word. But it's not going to make a difference in your life until it combines with belief and faith in God's word. And when you mix those together, then you'll find yourself in a better place. You'll find yourself living better. You'll find life changing for you. Because it goes back to the beginning when we read those first verses about uh, the zeal uh, that the people of Israel, that the Jews had uh, for God, but they lacked knowledge. They didn't know. And they wanted to do things the hard way. Uh, when I look back over my life, if only I had done things the easy way, and the easy way is having faith and belief in God, a lot of decisions and things I wouldn't have encountered if I had believed in God more than believing in myself. Because see, I believe that I could work to get things done. I could work to make things better. I could work to change things. Um, and that would make me a good person or make me right. But it didn't work. So, so this lesson is reminding us, don't make the same mistake that, that the Jews made, that we still make today. Don't feel like that you have to work for salvation. That's a free gift. Christ did that for us, loved us so, that he freely gave himself. He took on that curse of the law for us. So that, not that we would be perfect people, that our sins would be covered in his blood and God would see us as as righteous people so and then even after you're saved you it reminds us that you don't have to work hard to make the grade a working hard won't make the grade for you it's not like in school that I'm gonna work hard and get this a now I'm gonna believe in faith and I'm gonna receive salvation because I'm saved through Jesus. So I thank God for you today. Um, I pray that now we could share salvation with others and that we could understand that our salvation didn't come through no works of our own. It just came through our faith and belief in Jesus Christ. And that we don't have to be ashamed because it's for all of us. And that if we believe in him more than ourselves, we won't be ashamed. So I pray that today you share God's gospel, share the gospel of Jesus with as many people as you can, not only in your words, but in your ways. So we thank you, Lord, for your word today. We thank you for you. And we ask that your continued blessing upon all your people. And we pray that you'll join with us today in, in worship service, uh, whether that's via social media, YouTube, or in person. But just find your way into the presence of the Lord and continue growing in the faith that he already has bestowed on you and growing in that righteousness that he's given to you freely. We thank you. May God bless you. St. Andrew P.B. Church, where Elder Buford Moore III is pastor, is located at 1393 Swancott Road, Madison, Alabama, 35756.